It started in 2002 with a daughter's love of horses and a mother's love for her daughter. Rebecca Farm is nestled just northwest of Kalispell and nearly 20 years after being established is now home to the biggest equine event in the nation. Wanted to educate the rest of the world, the rest of the United States, that this place called Kalispell, Montana existed and it was actually really cool. Starting today, hundreds will converge with their horses and today, Wake Up Montana is on the road to celebrate the event and legacy at Rebecca Farm. And so, good morning. I'm Chairston Bell, Ken McGrath, Majestic Storm here, joining you live. Good morning. We are so excited to be here. Uh, we are at Rebecca Farm. There is a lot going on today for the event. We're excited to show it to you. Uh, but first, we got to get to the forecast. Yeah. So, oh my gosh, lightning, thunder it last was night. Crazy it was last a night. monstrous storm. Power Didn't flickered you get video? for so many of you. You got video I of got it. I got video. We were going uh, into our hotel right in the middle of the thunderstorm. Nothing like a summertime thunderstorm. Right. Mm -hmm. And this morning, it's beautiful out here watching yeah. the sunrise. And we're going to continue to see warm day today. Mm -hmm. But our major concern is we have a red flag warning that's going into place at noon, continuing through 10 p.m. tonight. So you can see on our graphic right there, the entire area shaded in that bright pink needs to pay very close attention because we are talking about increased fire danger today as well as tomorrow. And it's because we're talking about really dry conditions. And then those winds are going to pick up today. We can see those winds anywhere from about 25 to 35 miles an hour with those winds actually gusting up to 50. We also have the potential of seeing thunderstorms. And when we're adding everything together, dry conditions, gusty winds, hot temperatures, plus thunderstorms, it's not always a good scenario out there. So if you're spending time outside today, make sure you are being very mindful. But warm temperatures on the way, I'll show you that in just a few minutes. All right. You know, it's kind of fun to see uh, folks here, all the athletes starting to wake up a little bit. Yeah, the horses. The horses, the horses I've never seen in my whole life. Just stunning. <laughs> too. <laughs> Some of these athletes, in fact, just speaking with them yesterday afternoon, are Olympic hopefuls. So yeah. you never know what you might see here at the event. Yeah, so stand back, stand by. Uh, we're going to have all of that. <laughs> but first, let's get you in uh, to the new studio with Matt Rogers. He has all of the headlines for you right now. Matt, good morning to you. Good morning, you guys. We'll get uh, back to you in just a moment. But yeah, as you mentioned, that big storm there and all of the lightning. Well, that's got a lot of people thinking about fires. And this morning we are in fire mode as crews keep a very close eye on the weather while trying to manage several lightning sparked wildfires. Most of the Treasure State, in fact, as you just saw from Majestic, will be under a fire weather watch. Red flag warnings starting this afternoon supposed to last through this evening. So far on the Flathead Reservation, there have been four fires sparked during Monday night's storms. And in last night's adding to that, the CSKT Fire Division has dubbed them the Corrals Fire, the Bullpine Fire, White Swan Fire, and the Moss Ranch Fire. Today, crews say that the Bullpine Fire is out, but the Moss Ranch Fire has grown to over 165 acres and is at 20% containment. The other two fires, both just a tenth of an acre, so very small in size and mostly contained. Still, crews say that they are prepared in case any new fires pop up. Moving to the Lolo National Forest now, where smoke was reported about four and a half miles up the main Rattlesnake Travel Corridor on the south side of Rattlesnake Creek. When crews arrived at the scene, they found the small one-acre Bisco fire smoldering in conifer and mountain shrub. Now, a helicopter and hotshots are working together to suppress that fire before it grows. The Bisco fire is believed to have started by lightning. While no trail closures are in place and no structures are threatened, the public is being asked to avoid that area right now. Lightning also starting two wildfires on Missoula's popular recreational mountain, Mount Jumbo. Right now, both fires are contained. DRNC officials say each fire grew to about a tenth of an acre. So again, relatively and very small, but with the potential to explode from there. And crews, though, they got them under control very quickly. We did uh, receive a little bit of rain last night. So it could have dampened a, a few of those smokes out there. They could be smoldering around. We're just kind of waiting for them to pop up. We have detection flights out there. Both the Forest Service has a spotter plane as well as the DNRC and we usually fly around this area. 
Well, those flyovers are happening in DNRC's region that he works for, which includes Hamilton, Lincoln, and Superior. During fire season, the DNRC has more than 30 people and six fire engines on call, ready to tackle any fires that may start. With fire season in full swing, Lewis and Clark County and the Elkhorn Community Organizations are concerned about your family's safety. They're holding a family preparedness fair to educate families on what to do during a disaster. Wake Up Montana's Jessica Watts tells us the importance of having a plan. The county is urging residents to sign up and plan ahead to be a part of their family preparedness fair because you never know when and where a disaster will strike next. The fair is scheduled during National Preparedness Month and Lewis and Clark Public Health says a family disaster kit can make it that much easier to evacuate quickly in case of a fast approaching wildfire or other disaster. If you have to leave your home and go to a shelter or worse yet if you have to just evacuate and get out of town in a big disaster, we want to make sure that people understand what kinds of things to take for themselves, for their family and for their pets. An ideal disaster kit should be mobile and have supplies to last you at least three days. Lloyd says each disaster kit will be a little bit unique to everyone's family situation, depending if you have medication or different types of medical devices, so you might need some additional items. The county also says because our beautiful state is so rural, you should plan on having enough supplies in your disaster kit to last up to four days. Reporting in Helena, I'm Jessica Watts, Wake Up Montana. All right, Jessica, thank you. Well, as a father of a 10 year old daughter, this next story has had my heart skipping when I first saw it. A story that's circulating across the country and sounding on alarms, sounding off alarms towards wildlife safety. We do want to warn you the video you're about to see might be considered disturbing. A nine year old Florida girl is OK. We do want to stress that after being treated for injuries. Listen to this. She was tossed in the air by a bull bison. It happened in Yellowstone. And we have the video to show you. Watch this. A group of people were getting pretty close to this bison. Some would say too close, and there you saw it. That bison charged and tossed that nine-year-old girl up into the air. Officials there saying she was assessed at the Old Faithful Lodge, treated by emergency medical workers, and then released. So nothing serious, thank goodness. Yellowstone officials do remind visitors the animals in the park are wild and to give at least 25 yards of space from all large animals, 100 yards from bears and wolves. No citations have been issued. Fish, wildlife uh, and parks urging you to make sure you're rinsing off your boats to prevent aquatic invasive species. Wake Up's Katie Tursek is sharing why doing this might save you and your water equipment troubles. Here's how this works. They're called aquatic invasive species, and they're either plants, animals, or diseases that don't normally live here in Montana. They end up taking over native species and start overcrowding and clogging up lakes and rivers, making your boating and kayaking trips a burden. An example of AIS species is zebra mussels. They're devastating to bodies of water because they're unlike native mussels. They attach to things under the water. They have these little threads on them that attach to things. So they could attach to the bottom of your boat or a dam or your docks. FWP has been taking action to prevent this problem. They've increased mandatory invasive aquatic species before boats head out on the water. If you take a boat across the continental divide, they must be inspected. As for here in Great Falls, Tiber Reservoir is one area that's currently being monitored for aquatic invasive species. In Great Falls, Katie Tursek, Wake Up Montana. All right, Katie, thank you. This morning we have some new developments in the murder of a student at the University of Mississippi. The Sheriff's Department arresting Brandon Thiesfeld in the murder of 21-year-old Ali Costiel. Her body was discovered on Saturday near Sardis Lake, roughly 30 minutes from campus. People in that area are obviously disturbed by the news. Everybody I've talked to uh, just can't believe it even happened. It was scary because in such a safe community, you wouldn't expect something like this to happen. Well, authorities previously saying that they were following multiple leads to determine just how Coastal ended up near the lake. According to the university spokesperson, the Esfeld has been uh, suspended. Meantime, uh, those who knew Coastal are left to mourn the loss. Cause of death has not yet been released. Happening next here on Wake Up Montana, former special counsel Robert Mueller set to testify before the House Judiciary Committee and House Intelligence Committee. He'll be taking, we'll be taking that report live 
When it happens, the hearing expected to last a good chunk of the day. 9-11 first responders injured after the 2001 terrorist attacks are one step closer to permanent compensation. The Senate passing a bill that will fund the 9-11 Victim Compensation Fund through the year 2090. The bill will help individuals who were injured during the 2001 attacks and its aftermath rescuing others and removing debris under hazardous conditions. Solving this problem is urgent because more and more people become sick. These were our bravest soldiers. They rushed to the towers. Well, Senator Rand Paul delayed the bill, uh, urging Congress to offset the cost by cutting government spending elsewhere. Parents, listen up. New information showing a flaw in Facebook's messaging app for kids, allowing thousands of users to enter groups chat with strangers. This according to Consumer Reports, Messenger Kids enables children between 6 and 12 years old to chat with family members and a list of friends pre-approved by their parents. But a technical error in the app meant that it was possible for a child to enter a group chat with people who had not been approved by their parents. Facebook told Consumer Reports that it has fixed the flaw. Consumer News Now, who doesn't love to unwind with some wine and cheese or maybe some cheese its Kellogg has seen the tweets praising the apparently magic combination and they're on top of it. The company's offering a combo cheese it and wine box, teaming up with boxed wine company House Wine to make it happen. Only for a limited time, you can find this product on the House Wine website starting tomorrow. The cost, 25 bucks. Now to some news that's trending locally. This week we look toward the skies as Miss Montana helps the Experimental Aircraft Association celebrate 50 years in Oshkosh. EAA Air Venture is the world's largest air show. It's held every year in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, with this year being deemed the year of the fighter. The World War II plane has already made multiple appearances at Air Venture. Miss Montana has been on display with other warbirds and currently front and center in the vintage plane section. Later on this week, the DC-3 will fly in with other warbirds into the afternoon air show tomorrow, Friday, and Saturday. All right, at 4.43, let's get you back out to Ken and Chairston. 5.43, I guess I should say, guys. And the, you know what? We're starting to get a little daylight out there, aren't we? Yes, we are. Beautiful start to the morning right now. A little bit of cloud cover, a light breeze to the air. The moon is still up, but the sun <laughs> is starting to peak its way over the mountains and just a really beautiful start. And you can smell the grass. We got a little bit of rain last night. Okay, when I mean little, I mean a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. I mean, it was I mean, a storm. A big storm has been talking area. about that. But really to understand how this location became the premier place for the event, mm. you, you really need to understand the history and that's what we want to talk about right now it all started with a little girl named Sarah she loved horses so much and what a beautiful way to to honor that absolutely but it was it was hard for this Montana girl to find a place to compete mm -hmm. all right so her mom Rebecca uh, she would take Sarah to Washington and California so Sarah could participate in events uh, then in 2002 Rebecca decided to create the event right here where we're standing. Loved being here, loved what the Valley has to offer, and uh, wanted to educate the rest of the world, the rest of the United States, that this place called Kalispell, Montana existed, and it was actually really cool, even though it was off the beaten path. Now soon, the event grew to a World Cup qualifier and now the biggest in North America with eventers coming to compete in show jumping, dressage, and cross country. So Sarah actually lost her mom to cancer in 2010, but has since created such an incredible legacy here at Rebecca Farm in Kalispell. Yeah. All right, Jenny Power here this morning. Yeah. Jenny, um, we want to bring in Jenny because Jenny came here a couple days ago discovering why this legacy, this story, this place is so important to the region. Jenny? Well, guys, when Rebecca Farms started this event, they wanted to make sure that it was fun for not only the spectators, but for the riders and the horses as well. Bert Wood and his crew travel the country creating jumps for equestrian events. In between the leaf, right, 
This will all be kernels. But there's one stop that stands out from the crowd. We look forward to it every year. At your typical equestrian event, horses are jumping over logs and fences. But here at Rebecca Farm, they like to have a little fun. If you did stuff like this at any of our other shows, you know, playing around, doing the piddly little fun stuff, you're going to get fired. The organizers at Rebecca Farm are looking to have a little more fun, and that allows for a lot more creativity from this team. After the jump was built, then we started decorating the inside of the jump. On the course at Rebecca Farm, you'll find a corn on the cob, a historic village, and an old mine shaft. When I built it, I spent like 20 minutes out here just pulling it back and forth going, it works. Each year they add a new element, and this year it's a county fair. You gotta have a whack-a-mole at a fair, right? Bert and his crew spend about a day on each jump. They're in Montana for about five weeks this summer. Then it's on to the next stop. So we're in and out like souped up carnies. All of these events is exactly why equestrians refer to this as the Disneyland of all events. Now back to you, Ken and Cheerston. All right, now some things are just experienced live, okay? So when we come back, Cheriston tours the Disneylands of events. She just got on a golf cart, so you're going to want to stay tuned for this. Wake Up Montana continues on the road in Kalispell for the event at Rebecca Farm. Don't you go anywhere now. Cross country is considered the most dangerous event. Rider takes the horse through many obstacles. Only the rider can see the course before competing. 